Hello everyone! It's Travel Teach here again with another video. As some of you know, and most of you don't know, I just got back from Beijing last week. I had the opportunity to go to the Palfish office to visit and to meet some of the operations staff and it was a pretty good visit overall. But today, the most important thing I would like to talk to you about is the opportunity to meet students on Palfish. So yesterday, I actually got a message from a teacher who was concerned about this and who wanted to know if it's okay for us to meet our students on Palfish in real life. Actually, she asked me, is it allowed? And I actually had to think about this. I mean, there's no official rule about this as of now. Maybe after this video is made, there will be an official rule. But right now, there's no official rule about whether you can meet them or whether you can't. But for me, one of the main reasons why I'm doing Palfish is to get a connection to Chinese people. So the reality of living in China, especially in a city like Zhengzhou, which is in Henan province, is that it can be very alienating as a foreigner. And one connection that I hadn't had before Palfish that I definitely have now is that I know Chinese people who are from different parts of China. This is really important for me because I can get an idea about what places are like and it gives me an opportunity to go and visit new places and to meet them. For me, this is an important part of why I'm doing what I'm doing is so that I do have that connection to them. I know what their life is like. For example, one really big example that I love is that the students that I teach who live in southern China, for example, in Guangdong province, in Guangzhou or Shenzhen, they have never seen snow before and they are so fascinated by talking about snow. It's so interesting for me because I grew up in Texas where everybody thinks Texas is super hot. Newsflash, it's not hot all the time. And in Texas it snows and so I grew up with snow and that's kind of a normal thing for me. But for the people in Guangzhou, especially the younger students, one girl who I have that's 10, Will tell me sometimes I dreamed last night about a snowy night and I got to play in the snow and make a snowman and throw snowballs with my sister and I think that that's really cute but it's also a good way to see about their daily life how do they live what are their dreams what are their hopes for the future and one way that you can turn this online teaching into a reality for the students is by going to meet them. I know everybody doesn't live here in China and everybody doesn't have this opportunity, but for me, this is one of the make or break deals about Palfish. And plus, since you have the opportunity to message the students directly, it does give you the, you know, feeling that you can go and meet them. And I've had many parents ask me, can you come here? Can we meet? Welcome. Chinese people always say welcome to city name. So lots of Chinese parents have told me this. And I use this opportunity while visiting the Palfish office in Beijing to go and meet three of my students. And so this is really what I want to tell you about today. So the first two students are very special for me because they are actually best friends. They are, I think they are five years old now, and I started teaching them when they were four. Maybe they're five and six. I'm not sure. One is about six months older than the other one. But the first girl that I started teaching, um, I'm not gonna use her name because I would like to respect her family and her and give her a little bit of privacy. Actually, the three students today, I'm not going to use their names. They're real, I promise. Um, so the first student, uh, she was actually, I think, one of the first 10 trial lessons 
that were ended up being buyers on Palfish of mine. And me and this girl connected from the very beginning. I can remember I gave her a level one trial, but she was actually at the starter level because she can't read. But anyway, me and this girl connected from the very beginning. The child actually tried four different platforms before choosing Palfish. So this can give you an idea about the competition and what that's like in China. There are lots of platforms for them to choose. So as a teacher on Palfish, you need to be a representative of the Palfish platform and make them see why Palfish is the best. So this girl and I have done almost 30 hours together and we share lots of things. We share lots of laughs and about 10 hours into our lessons, she actually recruited her best friend to Palfish. So I got to go and meet both of them and their parents and it was so wonderful. We ate hot pot together, which is one of my favorite meals in China. and. It was really nice to see them face to face. You know, a lot of the students, maybe we see them every day. We think we know who they are, but when you see them face to face, you can really get an idea of what their personality is like. The second girl actually has a much more outgoing and comfortable personality and showed me that in person. Um, than the first girl does, but it was so great to meet them and to see how they're best friends and to see how they interact with each other in Chinese, of course, not in English, but it was so good to get a feeling about the students. And you know, this only makes my connection with those two students stronger. And talking to the parents, talking about education, talking about their daily life, what do they do, who are they, that gave me a great feeling and it made me feel very strong in the connections that you can make on Palfish. The second story is a little bit different because the third student that I went to go and meet, she is actually a free talk student. She's not an official course student, but this student I've done, I think about 50 hours with on Palfish. And so we know each other very well. And at the beginning, this student needed a lot of support in the classroom to know. Uh, she has a very fluent level of English, but she needed some support in to know what's acceptable to say, what's acceptable to ask, and how to proceed with our lessons and to really have a lesson while she's engaged. You know, this is a little bit different of a thing on free talk because um, the lessons are not as regulated as they are on the official course. So uh, knowing that it was a real lesson and how to treat the teacher and how for me to treat her as a student, she needed a little bit of support in that. But the parent was so understanding despite not being able to speak English at all and really helped to support the child to talk with her about these things. So we have a really good relationship, a really good foundation to begin with. But when I went to go and meet her, they were waiting for me in the subway station. And when I first saw her, she was wiping tears away from her eyes, which was so adorable because she was so excited to see me. And um, maybe for the first 20 or 30 minutes we were together, she kept looking over at me. She kept saying, actually, you're so big, you're so big. And it was, she didn't mean that about my weight or about my body. She meant that like, you're so big because normally I only see you on the screen. She told me on the screen, you're just a tiny little tomato, <laughs> which was so cute. I mean, this is just hilarious. Children are super creative, but Another thing that can help if you have the opportunity to go and meet your students is that you become a real person for them. You're not just a face on the screen. You're totally real. And my experience with her and her family was so great. She has an older brother who is 18 who can pretty much speak English fluently. And so he helped a lot of the translation that was going on because these parents didn't speak English at all. So um, I went to her grandmother's house and I got to eat her grandmother's food, which was 
amazingly delicious. And um, I should say that they live in a village. So this was my first experience in a Chinese village to see the village way of life as well. So um, after a few hours together, after eating and talking, we went to see her new house. They've been building for a while. If you teach the student on Palfish, you will absolutely know who I'm talking about. She has lots of different teachers. But um, it was so cute at the very end of the our meeting, we were driving back to the subway station and she just looked at me and she said, is this all a dream? Is this really real? Did this really happen? I told her, yeah, yeah, it's real. I'm really here. She said, I don't even feel real right now. So that was a really, really cute response to being able to meet me. So when you get to meet your students, no matter if they're young or old, then it really puts a real face. You become a real person to them. And that's one of the best things for me about teaching online and I don't know, I just had a very, very positive experience with meeting my students. So as you can see, my two experiences meeting my students were very, very positive. I feel like I can be a better teacher to them now. And I definitely encourage you, if you have the opportunity, if you're living in China or if you are planning to travel to China, to reach out to your students, especially those who you've done a lot of hours with or who live in places where you're planning to visit and uh, have a chat with their parents and see if they're interested in meeting up. And hopefully you will have really great and positive experiences too. I mean, for me, this is just a totally heartwarming thing because I got to meet three of my favorite students. It's like meeting three new best friends. Okay, my students aren't my best friends, but <laughs> you get the point. Anyway, if you have any more questions about this, or if you liked this video, please like, or leave me a comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks, guys. I'll be coming at you with more new videos very soon. See ya!